Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to the NTT R&D Forum 2023 ION Acceleration today. I am Sachiko Onishi from NTT's R&D Marketing Unit. The R&D Marketing Unit was inaugurated in June this year. Our mission is to create new values by fusing our traditional product out research and development approach with marketing. Today, I would like to talk about our research and development work from two perspectives, the product out approach and the market in approach. ION has grown out of exploring and exploiting technologies that connect people, which originated from the telephone. It's the result of the product out approach to research and development. In addition to this, there's the market in approach in which we build up a picture of people, society and the planet and of how we can create a future that is sustainable yet also exciting to live in and then push forward the kind of research and development we need to make this vision a reality. A technology truly takes its first breath when it's implemented as part of society. Now, four years since the announcement of the ION concept, I hope that you can now feel this idea coming to life and can create in your minds a mental picture of the exciting future that it will ultimately make possible. What can we see in this picture? This is the very first telephone made back in 1890, 133 years ago. This is the starting point of technologies that connect people. When you telephone someone in those days, how long did it take before you could actually start talking? The first phone didn't have a dial, so you would be connected to an operator when you picked up the phone. If you asked the operator, can I speak to Miss A, please, during the day, you would be able to talk to her by the evening. A whole six hours and seven minutes later. You could also pay double the fee for an urgent connection, which took only two hours and 26 minutes. Following this first phase of telephone development, the Ministry of Communications Research Institute was inaugurated 75 years ago. In 1966, our research into optical technology and optical fibers began. These technologies that connected people have ultimately made it possible to connect people and information, people and objects, and the real and the virtual domains, and to transmit not just sounds, but images, data, skills, experience, and spaces. Our 50 years of research into optical technology have now culminated in the ION concept. The ION concept is about using light not just for conveying information, but in processing layers as well. Let's look at the differences between electronic and optical technology. As this graph shows, with electronics, power consumption rises dramatically as transmission distance over circuits grows. Moreover, as processing speeds grow higher, higher operating frequencies are required too, raising power consumption still further. But with optical technology, even as the transmission distance grows longer and operating frequency rises, power consumption does not increase. This feature means power consumption can be lowered still further by using optical technology, not just for transmitting information, but also in the information processing layer. By bringing optical technology into all layers from the network to data terminal processing, IO not only lets us reduce power consumption, but also improves transmission capacity, quality, and latency. For example, APN features optical technology end-to-end -end without the traditional switching between electronic and optical technologies, enabling latency-free speed and streamlined power usage.
If this were trains, traditional switching would be like having to change trains several times to get to your destination, as shown in the upper image. The APN works like the lower image. It's like taking one bullet train all the way to your destination. At the 1970 Osaka Expo, the first cordless phone was exhibited, connecting people by transmitting sound. At this time, fixed landline phones were still the norm, following the first ever exhibition of cordless phones. First pagers, then cordless phones and smartphones quickly came into widespread use. At the 2025 Osaka Expo, the ION APN will be used to transmit spaces in real time by connecting the data center with the NTT Pavilion venue. Using AI to analyze the NTT Pavilion, we intend to recreate the pavilion at the data center, letting users experience the dynamically changing and exciting atmosphere of the real live venue. It took around 90 years for landline phones to become near-universal in Japan. With cars, it took 30 years for the penetration rate to exceed 80 percent, shrinking to 15 years for the Internet and just five years for the smartphone. Household penetration rates for services that have grown out of technological innovation are rising faster and faster. The growth of ION is also gathering speed. Our ION APN 1.0 service was launched in March this year, four years after the initial vision. As new services permeate people's lifestyles at an accelerating rate due to technological innovation, the power volume required for these are also accelerating. Once generative AI is added as well, it's anticipated that by 2030, data volumes will have risen by 16 times and power consumption by 13 times from that of 2018. Because of this situation, demand for data centers are continuing to grow as a result. Demand forecasts for data centers are already anticipating supply shortages. Power consumption at data centers in the Netherlands and Singapore now form a large proportion of total demand, creating a very difficult data center environment to the point of moves being made to block or limit construction of new data centers. ION APN is the solution to this problem. By creating distributed networks of data centers linked through low-latency connections using APN, it is now possible to operate the network of data centers as if it's one single large data center. We believe that by creating distributed networks of small to medium data centers in available spaces and putting data centers in places where power demand is low or where local energy for local consumption is possible, and connecting these data centers using the APN technology, we can reduce power shortages at data centers. And whereas the maximum distance between data centers to avoid latency was previously limited to 60 kilometers, APN allows data centers to be placed up to 100 kilometers apart. In the UK, verification testing of data centers between London and Dagenham, which are around 100 kilometers away from each other, connected by APN, is already underway. As shown on the left, there is a lack of space for establishing data centers within a 60-kilometer range of London due to high land prices. Expanding the range to a 100-kilometer radius should bring in lower land prices, enabling potential sites to be found. ION, the product of exploring connection technologies and product out research outcomes, will increase energy efficiency by 100 times, increase transmission capacity by 125 times, and make digital information societies formed from technological innovation more energy efficient and sustainable. Now, I will talk about NTT's R&D from the market-in perspective. Communication has advanced from transmitting sound to video, data, the sense of touch, and space. I would like to give a few examples of R&D analyzing how this technology functions in our lives, society, and across the planet, and a few examples of R&D utilizing this technology to solve social issues and create an exciting future. First is food one of the three basic necessities of life. As we're all aware, we face growing risks to the stability of our food supply. Effects on our diet are already becoming apparent. 
with prices of processed foods and condiments rising by 20% on average, and grocery bills rising by 150 to 200% compared to one year ago, we can see how this risk is becoming a reality. As you may know, Japan's food self-sufficiency rate is just 38%, 12th among 13 major economies. Japan's agricultural workforce has fallen by almost 70% compared to the workforce in the year 2000. The average age is also continuing to rise, and the average age is now 68 years old. Meanwhile, the area of abandoned farmland has increased by 1.7 times to that of 1995 and has risen to 420,000 hectares, twice the size of Tokyo. Some countries have boosted their food self-sufficiency rate through innovation, despite population decline and challenges brought by geography and climate. As you know, the Netherlands is an agricultural superpower, yet 20% of its land is below sea level, and its agricultural land is just 40% of Japan's. Nevertheless, through widespread deployment of large-scale protected horticulture enabled through technological innovation, it has become the world's second largest agricultural exporter. The UK's agricultural workforce has declined as well, but it has brought its food self-sufficiency rate up to 70% through the development of agricultural science. Based on technologies and solutions delivered by our R&D, NTT Group aims to create innovations within the food value chain, including breeding, agricultural production, livestock, fisheries and distribution, to create a stable supply of food. I would like to talk about three of these areas today. First, agricultural production and protected horticulture. NTT Agritechnology has set up Japan's largest lettuce greenhouse, the size of 1.5 soccer fields, for protected horticulture in Yamanashi Prefecture. We've succeeded in increasing yields more than tenfold with half the traditional workforce. The know-how we've demonstrated here has brought in inquiries from inside and outside Japan. The right-hand photo shows a farm we designed and constructed on contract after inquiries from a customer. This capsicum farm we've built is the size of three soccer fields. The customer tells us that yields have increased fourfold with half the traditional labor. We're enabling both larger-scale agriculture and reduced labor needs and combining higher yields with a reduced environmental footprint. We are providing remote business support from our automation labs using high-definition video transmission and robotics, even enabling those with no cultivation experience to get started. By delivering agricultural support remotely, our system enables a single expert to provide assistance to several producers. Next, produce distribution. With prices undetermined, producers ship all produce to big markets where it is likely to be sold for high prices. Such produce are often taken to large markets on a long journey via trucks that can take all day, rather than going to markets closer to the places it was produced. Agricultural products that are left over in a market due to fluctuation in numbers will either be transported to yet another market or, in recent years, wasted and thrown away because of failure to secure trucks for logistics. Using ION to create a more environmentally friendly distribution by analyzing and forecasting demand information for produce gathered in markets, we hope to ensure that fresh and only necessary amounts of produce is sent to consumers, reducing food loss and CO2. Please watch the following video. NTT Group is a food value chain of the food value chain. ION has been used to use ION. 仮想市場の実現に取り組んでいます仮想市場には農作物の取引データや気象情報に加え突発的なイベントや市場間の価格変動消費動向の変化などさまざまな情報が集まりますこれらの複雑に絡み合う情報から未来を予測することで農作物が運び込まれる前に売買の取引ができます。仮想市場には過去の売上データや販売側の需要データも集まります
生産者はそれらの情報をもとにあらかじめニーズを予測し生産計画を立てるマーケットイン型の農業ができるようになります作物のフードロス削減にもつながりますこのように By connecting specialists with producers, operators with farms, and producers to virtual marketplaces, with ION, we plan to make an environmentally friendly future in which we can distribute what you want. Fresh, safe, and delicious. And increase the nation's food self sufficiency rate. Next, let's move on to fisheries. Rising levels of CO2 are causing warming and acidification of the oceans, with ocean acidification reducing areas that are habitable by sea life. We are seeing long-term declines in catches of salmon, for example, as shown in the graph on the upper right. This acidification of the ocean is also causing declines in numbers of the phytoplankton and zooplankton that fish feed upon. In spite of this, the production volumes from fisheries worldwide have doubled since the year 2000. While catches of fish have remained more or less flat, aquaculture has been making up for the shortfall. However, as we can see from the center graph, while global aquaculture production has doubled, Japan's production is actually in the decline. As a result, having been ranked number one worldwide for aquaculture in 1980, Japan has now fallen to number 11 as of 2021. In July of this year, NTT Green and Food was established as a joint venture between NTT and Regional Fish, aiming to resolve issues of fishing industry decline, food, and the environment. One area that we are working on is the creation of sustainable foods. Here's one example of our sustainable foods. Sea bream with an edible portion that is 1.6 times that of a regular sea bream, while the algae it feeds upon is to be given extra activated photosynthesis, resulting in faster growth and the ability to fix higher than normal levels of CO2 inside its cells. Another innovation is our sustainable land based aquaculture plants. Atmospheric carbon dioxide is absorbed by the ocean, and the modified algae absorb larger than normal amounts of it within their cells. The fish eat the algae, absorbing and fixing this carbon dioxide in their bones and other parts, creating a sustainable production mechanism. We are currently constructing Japan's largest land based aquaculture plant in terms of production scale in Iwata, Shizuoka, as of October this year. The plan for the plant is to produce white leg shrimp as a fully domestic production system using a rare variety of Japanese seedling. Now, let's move on to health, healthcare, and medical care. Let me ask you a question. Which raises blood sugar levels more, a banana or a cookie? Who thinks it's a banana? Who thinks it's a cookie? It's 50 50 this time. The glycemic index, or GI for food, gives relative values for how high blood sugar rises after eating certain foods, with glucose given a baseline value of 100. The higher the value, the higher the glucose level. According to this index, a cookie has a higher GI value at 77 compared to 51 for a banana. So, the correct answer is. In fact, the correct answer varies from individual to individual. We had a group of people with pre diabetes eat a banana and a cookie to measure their blood sugar values. For 445 patients, blood sugar rose after eating a banana, but remained largely unchanged after eating a cookie. For 644 patients, however, the exact opposite happened. We can see from this that changes in blood sugar are different for different individuals. The number of people with diabetes worldwide has risen 3.6 times over the last 20 years. What's more, rapid rises and falls in blood sugar levels raise the risk of cardiovascular disease as well as diabetes. 
Chronically high blood sugar damages blood vessels through the whole body, causing various health issues. Stabilizing blood sugar after meals is believed to reduce heart disease and cancer risks. In other words, blood sugar has a major impact on bodily health overall. Here, I like to show you NTT's wearable blood glucose sensor, a technology that lets users measure blood sugar levels at any time, helping them understand what kinds of foods raise blood sugar. As we all know, blood glucose has traditionally been measured by drawing blood or using pinpricks. In the lower left-hand photo, the round object attached to the person's arm contains a needle that is piercing the skin and measuring the blood glucose level. This means that continuous, real-time measurement is very difficult. Now, the user can measure their blood glucose level with NTT's wearable sensor. Last year's R&D Forum's sensor was quite large, as you can see in the middle. This year, however, it's been reduced to the size of a watch, as shown on the right. The watch size sensor directs electrical waves under the skin's surface. These are then bounced back to the sensor, creating signals which are analyzed by the system's mechanism to measure changes in the concentration of glucose under the skin. With this, the user can grasp their blood sugar values in real time. By easily measuring blood sugar in real time, this system can ensure that pre-diabetic patients can eat many of their favorite foods while keeping an eye out on their blood sugar. In fact, cases are being reported of patients who are able to bring their blood sugar values from pre-diabetic levels to normal levels within a week by sticking to a diet suited to them while watching their blood sugar values. I'm sure some of you are excited, but if you look at your blood sugar level in real time, some people don't have a blood sugar level rise even when they drink beer. This lets people control their blood sugar levels themselves. Here's another question. Does drinking coffee contract your blood vessels? Or could it actually rejuvenate them? The antioxidants found in coffee are said to rejuvenate blood vessels, helping to maintain a healthy heart. However, it's also said that caffeine may cause constriction of blood vessels. Research suggests that while coffee drinking may reduce the risk of myocardial infarction in people with a genotype that breaks down caffeine rapidly, drinking coffee may put stress on the heart in those whose genes cause them to break down caffeine slowly. The ability to metabolize the components found in medications may also vary among individuals, as with caffeine. Take warfarin, which dissolves clots in blood vessels. Among the Japanese alone, the required daily dose of this drug can vary by a factor of 20 from patient to patient, depending on genetic type. In other words, while some individuals can take a single pill daily, others must take 20 pills a day. Analysis of genes and electronic medical records in terms of the ideal dosage of various medications for different people can open up the possibility of tailor-made dosage regimens and preventive medicine adapted to each individual. NTT Life Science is issuing reports which analyze disease risk and individual makeup in terms of alcohol metabolism and the like, as part of NTT's big data analysis and our genetic testing services, which use AI. The electronic medical record was often written in various sentences by doctors, and it was difficult to collect and analyze it. We are also using NTT's LLM Tsuzumi to automatically construct data, including electronic medical records, and using this data for analysis of individual differences. For example, there are many doctors who write that this person seems to be sluggish or that he is quite tired. Based on the various electronic medical record information, we can quantitatively express the patient's symptoms as grade 1 or level 3, and by accumulating this information, it will be made possible to create data on the symptoms of the patient and how the patient took the medicine, and to create individual characteristics. 
We believe that by using NTT's LLM Tsuzumi and AI to analyze a patient's individual makeup, physical characteristics, living environments, and medical histories, and developing sensors that can obtain vital information of various kinds through non-stressful methods, it should be possible to develop personalization in all kinds of areas including diet, medication, and optimized exercise levels. By enabling optimization of care and minimizing losses, this can also create a more sustainable, socially responsible, and environmentally friendly healthcare. And finally, our future visions for humanity, excitement, and the five senses. First, hearing one of our five senses. It was through sound that NTT first brought people together with our first telephones, so this is an area representing over 90 years of NTT research. Since the 2020 R&D Forum, when we first exhibited our personalized sound zone technology, which delivers high sound quality exclusively to the user's ears while minimizing sound leakage, we have continued to evolve this technology, culminating at last in the commercialization of our earbuds last year. We will offer an extensive lineup under the brand Sonority Noom Earbuds. Please give them a try. As a side note, the Sonority Noom earbud transceivers are being used by the R&D Secretariat this year to run the event. As these open earbuds don't block the ears or leak sound, they're ideal for use when running, cycling, and in construction environments. In addition to hearing and sight, we can also use touch to create sensations that feel a step closer to the real world. Please look at the device on the right. When the stethoscope is placed on someone's chest, the heartbeat that you can hear is communicated via electric waves to the ball, making it vibrate. At the Children's Conference of the Future held in July this year, we connected Tokyo and the United Nations New York headquarters this way. A boy in Tokyo, shown on the projector displayed in the central photograph, had his heartbeat detected with a stethoscope. It was relayed via the internet to the ball set up in New York, which vibrated in synchrony with the real heartbeat. One of the girls who touched the ball at the venue exclaimed, It feels like he's close to me. We believe that, unlike video communication that transmits video and audio with an instrumental value, the sense of touch can convey a person's existence, as if they're in the same space that you're in, transmitting not only instrumental value, but intrinsic value. Although society has been returning to real-life experiences following the COVID-19 pandemic, we believe the technology of conveying the sense of touch as close to reality as possible is exactly what is needed at this time. Next, I'd like to talk about technology that makes the user feel as though they've been sent through space and time to a completely different location. By recording the vibration sounds of a real-world bike race and the bumps and depressions of the racetrack surface, and converting all this into data, we recreated these sensations for a user riding a bike in the metaverse, including the way the vibrations change with different road surfaces and speeds. I invite everyone to try this experience out for yourselves, if you have time, at the experience corner that has been set up. Moving beyond hearing, sight, and touch, the world of human augmentation allows us to experience abilities that go beyond our natural capacity. Let's watch the video. カラダの We may be able to even get a taste of what it feels like to be an accomplished pianist. 
もしもピアノを弾きこなせたらそんな夢を誰もが叶えられるようになるんです 6G の時代へ向けてドコモは動きをシンクロさせる技術を開発中あ指が勝手に動くスキルをアプリみたいにダウンロードできる時代にしたいんです新しい常識が始まる予感あなたと世界を変えていくドコモはい、あのピアニストの As we've explored and exploited the technologies that connect people together, the scope of what we can communicate has expanded. By the digitization and information and data conversion, ION can efficiently analyze data with the use of AI at low costs, creating value in visualization, optimization, energy conservation, and also personalization. We believe that we can bring this value back to humanity and the five human senses, building a future of well being for the individual and a social well being for the environment through food, fashion, shelter, healthcare, and entertainment. AI can set out information systematically and present us with options. However, deciding how we feel about these options and what kind of future we want to have are tasks which require the power of imagination and conceptualization using the five senses that only human beings possess. Imagining a sustainable and exciting future that always considers the people, societies, and the planet that surrounds us. Our goal is to be a research and development team that can make this future a reality. Now, four years since the announcement of the ION concept, I truly hope that you can now feel this idea coming to life and can imagine the exciting future that it will ultimately make possible. We've categorized the ION concept into three timelines according to the maturity level of various technologies. ION Now, ION Evolution, and ION Future. And have created the ION Pickup Corner focusing on generative AI, Tsuzumi. Each timeline is then categorized into exhibit themes, offering multiple exhibits according to the usage scenarios and worldviews of the different technologies. The theme boards on display at the exhibits provide a single phrase that summarizes the technology, with the characteristics of the RD technology listed on the lower left and the technology's values, usage scenarios, and vision for the future given on the lower right. We are also offering more speeches than we have in previous years. In particular, Mirai Seminar, shown on the lower right, is a new initiative for this year. We encourage everyone to listen to these experts, to hear the market in perspective on different technologies in terms of what kind of future they will bring us, how society will change, and how our lives will change as a result of these innovations. If our forum and this presentation inspires any ideas for situations where these technologies might be of use, please don't hesitate to share them. Thank you very much.